Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use selection-based processing in Logic Pro. Now, what selection-based processing does is it allows you to load up a plugin chain, and then you can apply that effect directly to a selection or to an entire region. So it essentially renders or prints the effect into the region and creates a new audio file. So this is different than just loading effects on effects inserts on the channel in that these are not real-time effects. Now, why would you want to use effects that are not real-time effects? If you're using plugins that eat up a lot of processing power, this can pr be particularly helpful, but I'll show you a few different situations where I find this really helpful. Now, if you're a Pro Tools user or you have used Pro Tools, you're probably familiar with Pro Tools Audio Suite, which is very similar to this. Again, it just allows you to apply effects on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. So selection-based processing is essentially Logic's version of this, but with way more capabilities and way more functionality. So first, I'll just show you what I have here. It's just some multi-track drums I just jammed out a bit. No click track or anything, just playing around. Let's say that I want to sort of isolate some of my drums a bit more. Like you can hear a lot of bleed and ring, especially in the snare tracks. And some of this may be coming from the toms, but I may also want to isolate the kick as well. So the way you can pull up the selection-based processing dialog is just double click on any audio region. This will open up the editor and this should by default open the track editor. And then from here, you can just go to functions, selection-based processing, but what's probably better is just to memorize the shortcut for this, which is Option-Shift-P. So the way selection-based processing works is you load up a plugin. So for example, let's say I want to gate my kick drum, and one of my favorite drum gates, uh, drum gate and compressor, is called Drum Leveler from Sound Radix. And this is a pretty CPU-intensive plugin. When you load multiples of these up, it can really eat into your processing power. So I like to apply this first and just print it right into the waveform or print it right into the region. So what you do is you click the preview button right here and this will preview the processing. It'll preview any effects you have here in this effects chain. And then you can use this to sort of dial in the effect. Okay, so now if I want to apply this effect to the region, once you've set your effect the way you want it, all you have to do is click apply. And you'll see that this renders a brand new audio file, and now I can just play this normally. I don't even need to have this plugin up anymore because the effect has been rendered into the region. <laughs> Okay, so that's one way to use it, just with a single effect. Another way to use it is with multiple effects. So for example, maybe I want to pull up the channel EQ here, and maybe I'll just give this a bit of a high-end boost. Let's filter out the sub bass, maybe around 30 hertz or so, and then let's boost the low end a bit just to get a bit more fundamental in there. Now you don't have to have everything selected, like if you want to make a shorter selection, you can just use the marquee tool and drag over the area that you want to preview. So you can use that selection as a way to preview the processing and dial in a setting that you like. But what you can also do is you can create a B channel and you can A, B two different channel strips or two different effects chains. So maybe what I'll do is copy over my channel EQ. I just hold option and drag it over. And instead of drum leveler, maybe that's a bit too harsh. Maybe I want to use an expander instead. So maybe I'll just use Logic's expander. And to audition this one, I just click on the B channel and then click preview.
Now, one thing you got to do is pay attention to the volume here. If you're clipping, if your plugins are causing clipping, you're going to need to make sure you properly gain stage these in a way so that you're not getting a, a bunch of added gain and just hearing this louder rather than hearing it as better. But what's cool about this is when, you, when you're previewing, you can click back and forth between the A channel and the B channel, and you can determine which effects chain you like better. Now let's say for sake of demonstration that I like the expander better. It's less punchy, but it does still have a little bit of the bleed in the background, so it's a bit more natural. But let's say that I also wanted to factor in my drum replacement into this. If you have a certain drum replacement plugin you like to use, I like to use uh, UVI's uh, drum replacer. You can actually load that up in the effects chain as well. So I've got a kick sample here I like. I'm just gonna go ahead and load that in. And then what I can do is just preview the processing and dial in my kick replacement setting. So I'm just blending this kick into my existing recording. And if I even need like a manual gain adjustment at the end of the channel strip or the effects chain, I could just go ahead and load up the gain plugin. Then I could gain stage this a bit on the output if I needed to. Now, other options here are split at marquee borders. What this does is if you click on this and then click apply, what this will do is it will only apply the processing to the selection you made with the marquee tool. It'll split the boundary of the selection and then crossfade the joining points. If you don't use this option, it will just simply render the effect into that part of the region and nothing else in the region will be affected. Now I want this to be applied to the whole thing, so I'll just select it and then click apply. And that will render that effect with the drum replacement layered in into that region. So I find this one of the most transparent ways to apply drum replacement because you're not actually creating a replacer track. You're just blending the sample into the kick track and just living with it and committing to it. Now, another thing you can do here is if you want to ever go back to your original is you can click this create new take option. And what this will do is it will create a take folder for your processed region. So you can see here now, this is a take folder. If I double click on it, I can always go back to the original or I can use my processed audio. So I found that really nifty in case you want to go back and change this. Maybe you get this drum kit in the mix and it doesn't really you know, fit with the other instruments. You can go back in and apply some processing later. So this is one of the reasons why I feel like this is, is superior to using Audio Suite in Pro Tools. Um, I guess the flow of using it is a little more clunky, but uh, the actual functions that you have here are, are much better in my opinion. Um, let's move on to the snare drum here. So what I'm gonna do is just click on uh, channel strip setting, and you can actually save this as a custom selection-based processing channel strip setting if you ever wanna pull it up for later, or you can just click reset channel strip and it'll reset the channel that you have selected. Off screen, I added the expander as well as drum replacer again for this snare. Now, if you're not sure about your gain, you can actually click here and you can adjust the gain as no change, loudness compensation, overload protection, or normalize. I'll just use overload protection to make sure I don't clip. Then I can select that whole track, create a new take, and then click apply. And it applies that expansion and drum replacement to my snare track. And again, if I ever want to change this I can always go back into the take folder and select the original track and go from there. So 
to my ear, the drum replacement here is almost transparent. You don't almost don't even realize that a sample has been layered with the kick and snare, and it's all rendered into the existing drum tracks. Off screen, I pulled up another setting for the expander just to bring out the punch and reduce the cymbal bleed in the toms a bit. It sounds like this on the first tom. I'll just go ahead and apply this effect to all of my toms. So you can see this is bringing out the punch a bit, but also helping to reduce the background noise a bit. Another way I find selection-based processing helpful is when I want to do some spot tuning on vocals, either with Auto-Tune or Logic's built-in pitch correction plugin. And you don't have to place Auto-Tune or whatever pitch correction plugin you're using directly on the channel, so it doesn't affect everything. It only affects the spots where you render in the processing. So here's a quick example I did. Love was meant to be I keep on tearing through your tragedies I took the brunt of your shame And all your misery I think for the most part it's pretty good But from here until about here My vocals are a little flat So I'm just going to select all of that with the marquee tool I'll press shift option P to pull up selection-based processing. Then I can pull up whatever pitch correction plugin I want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use Auto-Tune Pro. And then this song is in the key of E minor, I believe. So let me just go ahead and set up the settings the way I want it. I keep on tearing through your tragedies. I took, I keep on tearing through your tragedies. I took. Now, if that's the only part that I want to tune in this vocal, you just make that selection and then click apply. I'm not even going to split at the marquee borders. I'm just going to render this into the existing region. And now that section there is tuned with auto-tune and I don't have to keep auto-tune on the channel and this won't affect everything else in the recording. Meant to be. I keep on tearing through your tragedies. I took the brunt of your shame and all your misery it's just a cry and shame that you cannot see all that is good for you and it doesn't have to be a whole phrase you can apply it to just a single word you can apply it to just one little area like this i could just make a selection there let's pull up auto tune again listen to it cannot see cannot see apply that in place and now it's tuned within the region there. In shame that you cannot see All that is good for you is just as good for me I gave you everything and you left me in the cold And there you go. So that's another way you can use selection-based processing for spot tuning with auto-tune or you can try using Logic's built-in pitch correction plugin. Here we go. This is probably a better way of using Logic's pitch correction plugin because when you just slap it on a channel, it tends to sound kind of bad. <laughs> it just doesn't really work out. But if you go through and you spot tune things note by note or phrase by phrase and change up the settings within the pitch correction plugin, um, this can be a good way to tune vocals without having to invest in a third-party pitch correction plugin like Melodyne or Auto-Tune. If this is a topic you'd like to see me explore in the future, tuning vocals using the pitch correction plugin and selection-based processing, please let me know and I'd be happy to do a tutorial on this. Just let me know in the comments below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully this has shown you the relevance and value of selection-based processing in Logic Pro. I use it all the time to clean up recordings, I use it all the time for preparatory things before mixing. So I find it an extremely helpful tool and a wonderful replacement for Audio Suite in Pro Tools. As always, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.